Hi, this is Rabbi Chaim Kaufman. Welcome to our 172nd installment in the Torah portion of the week. We are holding by Parshas Achare Most Kedoshim. Again, another double Parsha. As we mentioned a number of times, the we have to read, we have to read and finish the Torah in one year, and therefore there are going to be certain Parshas that double up. Otherwise, we won't be able to finish, uh, won't be able to finish the Torah. You know, by uh, by Sukkot, by the end of Sukkot, right by by the holiday of Simchat Torah, right? That we celebrate, we celebrate the finishing of the Torah. So this week, Parshas Achrei, Achrei Mos Kedoshim talks about the death of the sons of Aaron, talks about the Yom Kippur service, uh, talks about a lot of interesting things, service of the tabernacle, prohibition against eating blood, right? Maybe we'll cover that one day. Forbidden relationships that we read, that we read on Yom Kippur, Right at Mincha and Yom Kippur, then Parshas Kedoshim is all about being holy, what it means to be holy, um, gifts for the poor, honest dealings with others, love your fellow neighbor, run a lot of Musr. Basically, a lot of, uh, a lot about ethics, right, in Parshas Kedoshim. So here, we'll hit something in Parshas Achari Mois. says in chapter 16, chapter 16, verse. 24. Chapter 16, verse 24. What does the Torah tell me? Torah says, He shall immerse himself in the water in a sacred place, talking about the Kohen Gado, the high priest on his vestments, shall go out and perform his own burnt offering, burnt offering to the people, shall provide atonement for himself and for the people. So basically, Kohen Gado has the toivo. Right? He's got to go to the mikvah. He's got to go to the mikvah. Right? When he changes his clothing, when he changes his his vestments as they are known. Right? So comes along Rashi. Right? Rashi over here learns learns like this. Rashi says Rashi says the name of the rabbis that we learn we already learned before that the going out of the high priest has to wash his body when he changes his clothing from the big day Zav and the big day Lava. Right? When he changes his clothing from the from his gold clothing, his gold vestments, to the white ones. So here we learn when he goes from the, the white ones to the gold ones, he also needs. Right? He also needs Tfila. He needs the he needs immersion over here. So says my Rebbe, I rather go to Moshe Star Moshlita should be well. Brings down in his book on Chomish commentary on Chomish Tam Vidas. And he says like this He says the power to wander over here if if a person meaning the high priest if he wears gold clothing and then he changes he's gonna wear white Right, I can understand. I can understand he needs to feel it. Right, that I can understand. Right, because he's going up. He's going up in kedusha, in holiness. Why does he need to feel it when he takes off the big day love on? When he takes off the white clothing, the white vestments, and he wears the gold. In other words, white is greater. Right? White, white's on a higher level. So if it's from a lower level to a higher level, I understand. You're going up in holiness. If you're going down seemingly in holiness, why would I have to do tefillah? Why would I have to go to the mikvah? So he says, maybe, maybe, you can answer like this. Find the going out who prepares himself for this service. And he's wearing the lower level clothing. Maybe he'll forget his greatness. Maybe he'll forget his holiness. And he's going to forget he's going inside. Right? He's going in the Holy of Holies. Therefore, he's preparing himself for the mitzvah. The new mitzvah over here. And he has to go to the, and he has to go to the mikvah again. Right? He has to be toyful. He has to dunk himself in the mikvah. 
So a person shouldn't scoff at preparation even if he's already at a certain level. Because all every mitzvah needs preparation. Certainly before. And even if you do the mitzvah a number of times during the day, still needs preparation. So, number of things here, number of things here that we certainly, we certainly can mention. Right, we certainly can mention here. And that is, and that is that if you're going up a level in holiness, right, that's what you're preparing for. You are preparing to be on a higher spiritual level. So by preparing yourself, I understand. Okay, so I'd have to go to the mikvah in this case. Right, if he's the Kohen. If he's a high priest. If you're in a lower, if you're wearing more holy clothing, why would I need it? Why would I need special preparation? Right? Why would I need this special preparation? So says my Rebbe, you gotta remember, every mitzvah needs preparation. Right? That's really the fundamental principle here. But the coin himself, even if he's not wearing, meaning the, the high priest here, right, first thing is, you got to remember, he's on a very high spiritual level. Now, even though he's wearing clothing that's, okay, it's not on the highest level. Right? Because when the coin serves, <clears throat> there's clothing that he wears. There's clothing that he wears for the service, which means he's not going for Yom Kippur. Right, he's not going to the Holy of Holies. He doesn't need, he doesn't need the higher level holy clothing. Nonetheless, he may forget his stature. In other words, just because he's wearing clothing that is, okay, it's not as a high level as the other clothing. That may be true. Will that mean the clothing's on a low level? No. Right, he can't forget what he's doing. You're going to say, but he's the Kohen Gadol. Right, he's the high priest. How in the world can he forget what he's doing? Good question. If a person's on that level, he's not going to forget. Right, he shouldn't forget. But he said it could be. Right, it could be. Maybe he'll forget his greatness. Because he's wearing the lower level clothing. He came out unscathed, going in the Holy of Holies. Now he's on a lower level. Right? He's wearing the lower level clothing. Maybe he forgets who he is. I would admit, if somebody reached that level, went in, came out of the Holy of Holies, came out unscathed, very hard to imagine he's going to forget. Right? An example we could use I mean, this is a, I don't, I don't know if it's a good example, you know, but imagine, you know, imagine a person working around his house, and now if a person wears white and black, white and dark blue, white and gray, meaning white shirts, etc., that's how they, they would normally dress, but maybe they're going to take off the white shirt, they don't want to get dirty. Right, they'll put on, let's say, a t-shirt or something else. So they don't get dirty. You know, maybe wear a different type of pants. Whatever it is. I remember when I had, uh, when I was in South America, and I lost all my suits, I had to go, I had to go to a store, and in my broken Spanish, I had to tell them I wanted a, you know, I was looking for, for a suit, for a suit sin lana. Right, sin lana means... Without wool. I don't want to have a problem. I don't want to have a problem with shotness. There's no one to check. Right? If you have a wool and linen together, you need an expert to know how to check whether there's linen in it or not. If it says 100% wool, there could be linen in it in a number of places. So, I want to make sure I didn't have that problem. 
So I went into the store and I bought a few suits. You know, that were polyester. Try wear polyester suits. <laughs> Pants. They're not the uh, most comfortable, let's just say. Right, you know, until I until I get back to the States, you know, normal place, can get a normal suit, okay? But in this case, I had no choice. So when my so after, you know, I had other real clothes, quote unquote, to wear. So I would wear like these pants when I was cleaning around the house, doing things around the house. So my kids would ask, oh, so what are you doing? What are you fixing? <laughs> what are you looking at? Because they know, they know the clothes I, I was wearing, you know, wasn't clothing. Then I go pray it. Right? Certain standard. You know, people want to hold by and how they're going to dress. We spoke about dress before. Right? But the idea is, although why do I say not, maybe not a good example? Because even if you're wearing those clothes, you're working around the house, you can't forget you're still a yid, if you're a yid, right? You can't forget you're a Jew. Got obligations. Got to keep your mind straight. Got to remember, you can't speak Russian and You can't do other things. So you might forget, okay, I'm not dressed that way. Now, if you ask most people, you know, and they would ask about dress. Again, not necessarily the topic for now. I've spoken about it a number of times. But, you know, if someone to ask you, you know, why do you dress that way? You know, again, white shirt, black pants, with or stripes, right, pinstripes, you know, dark gray, with or without pinstripes, dark blue, with or without pinstripes, like, that's it, right? That's what most people in the outdoor orthodox community will wear. All right, no bright shirts, no colored shirts, no, you know, light color pants and whatever. It's, all right, that's the standard for whatever reason, right? That's the uniform. Right, so I'd ask people, so they'd ask me, they oh, why do you wear that? Okay, that's the uniform. Right, but I would go further and say, I would bet you feel different if you were wearing jeans. Forget ripped jeans. You're wearing jeans, chinos, right, khaki pants, shorts, t-shirts. If you're wearing a suit, with or without a tie, double-breasted, not double-breasted, depending on what the company demands, if you're working on Wall Street or whatever. Okay, it's one thing. But then when a person gets home, takes off his clothes, changes, because that's not who he is. They just dress up for money. No choice. Right, that's part of the job. Well, someone once asked me that. You know, why are you dress that way? So I asked them, I said, well, you dress, in, you know, in a suit. In a suit and tie. He says, yeah, that's for work. When I get home, I change. Right, usually what's the first thing or second thing you're going to do? Either you're going to turn on the TV when you get home, or you change first. Right, though they, they can be interchanged. Right, which comes first. Regardless. Regardless of that. So I said, oh. So basically, you're dressing up. And wearing a suit and fancy clothes for money. <laughs> that's your job. That's what you got to do, but that's not who you are. So you can imagine the person maybe got a little bit flustered. A little bit hot under the collar. Said, okay. So you also wear a suit every day. True? So why do you wear a suit every day? That's why I serve God. That's the uniform. God wants me to serve him in. Because there's a heck of a difference, and you ask anybody. There's a heck of a difference if you're wearing a suit or you're wearing other clothing. I don't care how comfortable the clothing is. Cotton pants, cotton shirt, whatever. Doesn't matter. Question is, you feel different. All right? It's not the same. Getting dressed up is more formal. So if you were dressing every day on a regular basis, you're addressing the King of Kings, whether in prayer or not, you gotta wear appropriate clothing. So you tell me in the modern Orthodox world, again, this is really not the topic for now, but in the modern Orthodox world, they won't wear white, you know, white and black or white and blue or whatever. They wear all different colors. Shirts. We're dressed like everybody else. They don't have a set uniform. 
I mean, there is modesty for them also, but, you know, they're not going to wear a set uniform like in the outdoor orthodox community, okay? But again, there's a difference. Person feels a difference what they wear. So, over here by the high priest, right, he's wearing heavy-duty vestments, goes into the Holy of Holies, comes out unscathed. Totally comes out unscathed. Now, he's going to take off those clothes and wear the other clothing. May forget who he is. Maybe forget his status. Very well could be. Because he's not wearing the super duper holy clothes. Right? So that's one thing. You know, he might forget his stature. Now again, the obvious question is, it just came out of the Holy of Holies. Came out of the Holy of Holies and survived. Because if a Kohen wasn't on the level, he wouldn't have survived. And there were many Kohanim at the time of the Second Temple, many high priests that bought the position or weren't worthy of it and took it or whatever, they died. Right? They were the high priests for a certain amount of time. Comes Yom Kippur, they went in, kind of like the Roach Motel. They, they checked in, didn't check out. That's it, they died. They had to be pulled out. I don't know what the great experience is. You know, you know you're going to die. How in the world do you think you're going to survive? Could be Gaiva, right, being conceited. Could be any number of things. But I wouldn't think you're going to survive. I mean, if you, you know, there's a very good chance you're not going to survive. You know, why would you want the position? Say fame, but you're going to die. <laughs> Fame's not going to be worth very much. You're the high priest for a certain amount of time. Come to him, it's over. So how long are you the high priest for? Six months? A year? No more than that, you're going to die. So it could be, again, the way we explained, could be that the high priest maybe will feel on a lower level. You won't feel at the level he's at. He's not wearing those vestments. Maybe. Right? That's one thing. Everybody says something else also. He says, comes on the high priest. And what's he doing? He's now doing a separate mitzvah. He's not going inside the Holy of Holies. He's got other things to do in the base of Mikdash in the temple. If he's got other things to do, what are we worried about? It's another mitzvah. He's got to prepare himself for that mitzvah. So therefore, even if the vestments he's wearing are on a lower level. Still, it's another mitzvah, so he's got a toivel. Right? He's got to go to the mikvah. He has to dunk. Because it's a totally separate mitzvah. So the idea, the idea I want to bring out here is that for any mitzvah we do, it doesn't matter, we know the punishment you know, for some of them are more severe. Some is less severe. We don't know the merit for all the mitzvahs that we do. So you got to do them all anyway. Because if we knew what merit we'd get for doing certain mitzvahs is much greater than other mitzvahs, you wouldn't do other mitzvahs. You'd focus on the big ones. That being the case, every mitzvah is important. If every mitzvah is important, it takes preparation. Now, I can understand by prayer. Prayer is something, one of the three things always needs to be strengthened. So that you can't run into prayer, right? That we mentioned a number of times. Prayer, you got to be prepared. You got to be ready. You got to get you got you to get there early. You got to get, you know, you got to take your mind, take everything out of your mind. Put it into what you're focused on. Right? To the main focus of prayer. So you got to clear it out. That's not an easy thing to do. Right? It's definitely not an easy thing to do. Regardless, i got to prepare. And I can't run into prayer. Why? Because then if I'm not there on time, I may not be able to catch up. So I have to cut things out, go back, and whatever. 
So you want to, you want to, you know, have a certain mindset. You want to have a certain mindset when you go in. Because if you don't, if you don't, then you're not going to be prepared. The holidays, right? Passover, we just fat, we just finished. You got Passover, <coughs> Shavuos, Sukkot, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. But every holiday, <coughs> including Shabbos, has a certain spiritual influence. Now, through that spiritual influence, I have to prepare to accept it, to receive it, really. Because if I don't work at it, I go through the motions, okay, I ate the matzah, went through the Haggadah, but I didn't really get that much out of it. It's not something you can do tshuva on, per se. Why? Because once it goes, it goes. You can say, okay, let me get it back. How can you get it back? It's over. Once that time period is over, once Passover is over, once Shavuos is over, once Sukkot, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, once the holiday is over, I can't tap back in. There's no way to get back in. Because it's over. You know, after the fact, yeah, a person can do tshuva. A person can repent. But that spiritual influence, gonzo. That spiritual influence, I never get back. It's an impossibility. So I got to prepare. So Marebi here points out every mitzvah. Not just prayer. I just, I just gave prayer as an example. Every mitzvah. Every holiday. Needs preparation. Doesn't matter how well you think you know it. How well you know the halach. You got to go through it again. Right? You got to review but you got to understand what's behind it. You have to understand what the fundamental message is. You have to delve into it. If you don't delve into it, that means you won't get anything out of it? No. You get something out of it. But getting something out of it does not mean I'll get what I need. Right? That's not what it means. Because the reality is, the holiday may come, not really prepared, and it goes. You got to take what's given to you now. You get the, oh, I'll do it later, like the Mission Perke Avois, right? It says, ethics of our fathers. It says, clear. Person will say, when I have time, I'll learn. Well, how do you know when you're going to have time? You know, people say, when I retire, that's when I'm going to, you know, seriously do this, do that, do the other thing. Who says you're going to do it? Can't worry about what's going to be in the future. Got to find the time now. Doesn't matter. Fix the time every day to learn. And that learning session, whatever it is, you know, it's something that never changes. You have to be consistent. You know, it should be the same time every day. If it can't be, okay. Right? But you got to fix times. When you fix that time, even if it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever it is, nothing else matters. I'm learning. Shut off the phone. Right? Shut off any device in front of me. That's it. I mean, unless, obviously, you know, you're listening to a class or whatever. Right? But in general, no want distractions. And the evil inclination is very good at getting you to waste time from learning, even if it's fixed. Even, you know, you're, you're consistent. Evil inclination doesn't want that. So the evil inclination puts obstacles in your way. So how do you have to look at it? You have to look at it as nothing, unless my house is on fire, God forbid, nothing is going to stop me from this learning session. And nothing means nothing. doesn't matter the amount of time. It can be a very short amount of time. Again, no phone calls. No distractions. You lock yourself up wherever you are. This is what I'm doing. That's it. Right, famous story. With Ephraim Margolios. 
Zechor Tzadik Levracha, one of the great rabbis of the last generation. And he had a set time to learn. He was a businessman also. And he had a set time to learn. And he told his wife, before 2 o'clock, nothing happens. At 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, whatever it was, no one's allowed to disturb me. That was the deal. And then he go to work and whatever. So one day, someone comes in. A few merchants come in, want to see, you know, want, want to see uh, Rabbi Margolios. They have a big business still. They can make tens of thousands of rubles in a very short amount of time. His wife said he can't disturb him. Right? Not available till 2 o'clock. They said, but don't you, you know, and they kept talking and talking. He said, no, that's the deal. He's busy learning. Can't be disturbed. You know, and they, and they kept coming and coming. You know, they said, don't you think for a few minutes, a few minutes is going to make so much money? What's he worried about? It's a done deal. His wife was adamant. Said no. And they went away. So after he was learning, his wife told him the story. And he was singing. He was dancing. He was ecstatic. Why? He said, look how much the Abish, look how much God values my Torah learning. <laughs> he thinks my Torah learning is worth tens of thousands of rubles. That has to be our attitude. You know, any mitzvah person does, you got to be prepared. It's got to be the single most important thing you're doing right now. Can't give a lip service. Can't do it by rote. you got an obligation to prepare. And again, preparation doesn't mean an hour. I mean two hours. You gotta prepare a certain amount of time. You know, but again, any holiday comes, there are a lot of things to learn. For that, you gotta prepare ahead of time. You learn stuff on the holiday as well. But it's totally different when you go in to the holiday prepared. And again, different levels of preparation. Right? But you go in more prepared than not. When you get to the holiday, it's a whole different thing. It's a whole different understanding. It's a lot clearer what's going on, what my purpose is, why I'm doing it. And it's not just I run into the holiday. Right? In my language, that doesn't butter the biscuit. Because you're not going to get anything out of it. Doesn't matter. You went through it this year, went through it last year. Went through it the year before. It's got to be fresh. It's got to be fresh in our minds. Right? God renews creation every day. Just like every day is a day. I didn't succeed this day. I always have tomorrow. I don't see tomorrow. I got the next day. All right? We're not always going to raise ourselves to the levels we want. Doesn't mean you don't have to try. Right? This world's all about preparation. Right? It's all about preparation for the next world. That's even bigger <clears throat> preparation a person needs. Right? Because Tom would tell us. Tom would tell us, person, if you don't prepare in this world. Right, the language is you don't prepare every Shabbos, you don't eat on Shabbos. What it means is you don't prepare in this world, what do you expect to have in the next world? Our entire being, our entire lives are about preparation. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Right, whatever it is, but we have to change the way we think. We have to change what we do. Right, during this time... Right? During this time, we're stuck at home. It's a time for introspection. It's a time to want to be better. Not doing things by rote. It's a time for us to raise ourselves to the level that we need to be. 
You know, because at the end of the day, everything's shut down. Okay, they're starting to open things slowly. But the question is, do we get the message? God wants us to prepare ourselves. He wants, he wants us to strengthen ourselves in prayer, in learning, making blessings, keeping Shabbos, keeping the holidays, working on character traits, not speaking Rosh Yeah, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to focus on. Question is, are we just passing the time? Or, quote-unquote, killing time? Or are we working hard to reach potential? Preparation over here is for every single thing we do. Every myth for that we do. Every holiday we go through. Because if you don't prepare and you do it, what's it worth? What is it worth? Did I get the mitzvah? Yes. Is it the way God wants me to do the mitzvah? No. Oh, give me credit. You know what he wants. We're in this world to strive. We're in this world to struggle. We're in this world to fight the evil inclination. Right? But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I have to do what God wants me to do. So how, how can I be on a, on a spiritual level, any spiritual level, if I'm just doing the mitzvahs, I don't think about what I do. And I just do it by rote. That. As the Bali Musa say, that's akin to spiritual death. We're not interested in going through the motions. We want to go beyond. We want to have that close connection. We want to be all that we can be. Can't be lazy. Not only that, if you don't prepare... You do things wrong. Lots of blessings, complicated. Lots of Shabbos, complicated. Got to constantly review. Because if you don't review, says the Chofetz Chaim, in his introduction to the third, third book of the Mishnah Brewer, the Laws of Shabbos, he says the laws are numerous. And if you don't review, you will transgress. It's not like, oh, you might, you might not. You will transgress. Because there are multiple details. Multiple, multiple details. So preparation in this world is everything. It's how we interact with others. We got to think about. It's how we want our connection to God. But truth speaking, it's not easy. Totally not easy. But the idea is, I need to work hard. I need to roll up my sleeves. I need to prepare. And preparation may always not seem so much fun. Right? It may not. It's a lot of sweat. It's a lot of aggravation in some ways. But this is what God says. This is what I want from you. Because how can you come close to me if you don't prepare? How is that possible? It's not going to be possible. Again, will you get credit? You'll get credit for what you did. As long as you did it right. But you say there are multiple levels. Give me a break. How much do I need to strive? You need to strive a lot. This is a very weak generation. 
we got to work extremely hard because we want to get to the other side. And even more important, getting to the other side, meaning in the next world, we want to have that relationship with God. We don't want to be like Cain, you know, brought a sacrifice and he brought dandelions. Right? We don't want to be rejected. I mean, could it be a person doing mitzvahs and be rejected? Depends how he does the mitzvahs. There's a lot to work on. You know, and that's okay. But I have to start somewhere. Because if I don't prepare and I'm not ready, then the holiday just goes by. The mitzvah, okay, I did it, but you know, I got a C minus. D plus. You say, see? You know, I got somewhat of a passing grade. Still going to get credit. Minimal credit. We're not interested in minimal credits. You know, we want it all. Right? And that, that's what we should be doing. What we should be striving for. To reach our potential. And to be the best that we can be. I want to remind everyone every Tuesday night, I have a class on Duties of the Heart. Uh, every Tuesday night, 9 o'clock New York time. Um, I have uh, two Q&As every Tuesday and Thursday, 10 o'clock in the morning New York time, usually on Facebook. Also, a book of Leviticus, chapter 12, or let's say better, chapter 13. Every Sunday, 9, uh, 9, o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning New York time. Uh, controversial Issues, every Monday, Tanakh Talk, every Monday, 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, sorry, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, 1 o'clock Central Time. Perke Avois, Ethics of the Fathers, every Saturday, every Saturday um, at 2.30, 2.30 uh, Eastern Time. If anyone wants to contact me, they can... Find me on Facebook, Beyond Orthodox Conversion Judaism. You want to send me an email, RabbiChaimKaufman at gmail.com. R-E-B-B-I-C-H-A-I-M-C-O-F-F-M-A-N at gmail.com. Wishing everyone a great Shabbos.